interesting. Yeah. Should yeah. Be fine. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let's go right into it. Good afternoon. Nice having you here. And um, what can I say? You've been a very big encouragement to people like us in nursing profession and uh, I mean no words saying all those things. And don't come into the arena of uh, you were a senior, you were not a senior. <laughs> don't get me blushing now. To be <laughs> don't get me blushing. I, I'm Serebra from OAUTHC. Highly passionate about professional development and progress. And so I am not surprised when you kept on with debating here and you keep shining and you keep flying. I can only oh, pray you. and wish you more strength to do exploits in the field of nursing profession and not to fail Amen. yourself, not to fail Amen. the generation we are in. You have my Amen. big, big timer. So how's you oh. have Sister Esther here? Uh, it's quite uneasy for me to drop the sister part of it. I know many of us want to keep it uh, maybe a bit high, high professional. And so kindly pardon me when you hear sister, because it's some, somehow heavy on my tongue to say ordinary Esther. And you can She's see her be me like a typical queen that she is. Eh? Someone is doing a great job at the background. So sister, Esther, like welcome I here. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you so much, so, so much for all the accolades. And um, of course, because I am a Christian by faith, I will say to God, the other glory for all the things he has done in me, through me and with me. Thank you so much for having me on this particular day. And I know we've been a long way coming and I mm -hmm. thank God for the grace that has brought us this far. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Thank Sister you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much for granting the uh, uh, invitation, uh, looking in, coming around here. I know it's quite from your very, very tight schedule as a nurse, as a mother, as a wife, as someone in the ministry. And we take not your time for granted that all. So let's launch straight into it. You are a rheumatoid specialist nurse in the United Kingdom. I knew you to be an excellent community nurse in Nigeria. And when I say excellent, no other words than, except if there's anything bigger and better than excellence, then I would have you on that uh, platform calling you that. Now, you were an excellent nurse back at home. You came around here. You were one of the first few to jump into specialty as a band five. Then you moved on and you moved on to a different role entirely, then you have to jump back in into that rheumatoid specialty. Then I said there should be something very fantastic and fantabulous and interesting about that field, about that specialty that are nurses you actually look into. So I said you should come on this podium to tell us something about rheumatoid, uh, rheumatoid specialty nursing in the United Kingdom. How did you get there? What special education or trainings did you have? How has the going be? Is this something you will recommend? Do you have so much reservations about it that you don't want people to come into it? How is it generally? Okay, okay. Thank you so much once again for having me on. Uh, first of all, let me uh, correct the name of the specialty. All right. So it's rheumatology specialty area and i work as a rheumatology specialist nurse um you've asked a lot of questions into uh with that um uh, passage of yours but i'm just going to try as much as possible to remember and then i'll be able to answer uh appropriately so um like you mentioned i was a public health trained public health nurse from back home I'm a registered nurse, a registered midwife, and a registered public health nurse. And um, like you rightly mentioned, community health uh, department to be precise. When I got into the United Kingdom, uh, my first point of call was in elderly medicine, what some people will refer to as geriatric nursing. Yeah. And um, I was in that role for about a year and a few months. And then I saw these um, adverts on my trust website we wanted to recruit for a rheumatology nurse specialist. And in all fairness, in all honesty, I knew nothing. I mean, 
absolutely nothing about what rheumatology was. So I had to do some background checks to, you know, research more about rheumatology. Mm -hmm. And I think I loved what I saw. And specifically because the JD and um, my expectation, well, what was expected of me if I would be coming into the role kind of matched with what uh, I have. I reached out mm -hmm. to the lead nurse for the department. That is the lead nurse rheumatology department in my trust then. And then I spoke with her, told her what I was thinking about and how I would want to come and shadow uh, in the department just for me to have a, more, a broader overview of what they do as specialist nurses in rheumatology. And bless her, she accepted me wholeheartedly and then got me in to shadow one of the specialist nurses. At the end of the two, three hours encounter, I knew to, it was something I would like, love to go into. And I put in my application and today I am a specialist nurse in rheumatology. Right, so what do we do in rheumatology nursing? Basically the specialty areas, the, the specialty area cares for patients with inflammatory joint conditions. And because yep. rheumatology is an evolving specialty field, evolving, we, we are now having more conditions coming in to the department. We take care of those who have connective tissue disorders, uh, something like Raynaud's, Sjogren's, um, uh, scleroderma, giant cell arthritis, it's all coming in. So we just don't deal with rheumatoid arthritis or um, juvenile idiopathic arthritis or um, what some people refer to as psoriatic arthritis. So it's, it's, it's the, the, the specialty area is kind of becoming broader than what it was when rheumatology started. It is uh, a specialty area that I love so much because it affords you so much independence. Standing on your feet, being able to stand as an advocate for your patient, then the specialty area is something to consider. Now, you mentioned something earlier on about um, what trainings did I have to undergo before yeah. I came into the department. To be honest, there was particularly no training that I did. The good thing about rheumatology is, rheumatology nursing is, all your trainings will be given to you in-house. Most okay. of your experience you are going to acquire within your organization. So you That's expand cool. your course, you broaden your knowledge based on the trainings that will be given to you within the house. That doesn't mean that there are not, no other trainings to do, but me coming in was not because I had a special training at all. So here am I today because I had, first of all, the will to succeed. And that is what, one thing that I want our uh, people to know. When you have the will to make something happen, then it is very, it becomes very, very easy for you to achieve. There is that saying that goes that uh, where there is a will, there is a way. And I tell you that is the truth. So, uh, but uh, having said that, let me confirm that um, most trusts, when I say trust, I mean hospitals in the United Kingdom yes. would want you to have your first degree Okay. before you go into a specialty area. But then that is trust dependent. So uh, I had my first degree in nursing science at the Upper Femi Awolo's University before I left home. And then because um, I've also worked with uh, patients in the health daily medicine, most of um, mm -hmm. the inflammatory joint issues that we have affect those who are within the upper age bracket. It doesn't rule out the fact that we have juvenile cases, but most of these conditions, a larger percentage comes from those who are within anything from 50 and above. Yeah. So with that experience and because uh, I was able to show determination and passion, right, I was able to uh, fully embed into the role without any issues at all. May I confirm also that um, if you're going to be a good specialist nurse, you have to have what we call effective communication skills because you will need it in your relationship with patients, your relationship with the MDT, that is the multidisciplinary team as a whole, your relationship with the GPs, your relationship with fellow specialist nurses, with the consultants and everyone that you will come across in your role as a specialist nurse. And you have to have what 
I would refer to as good listening skills. Why? It is very easy to miss what the patient is saying. There are times when they come to the clinic and their body language says it all. So it's not just about they talking, me listening. It's about what me can, what situation. So I am paying attention to what they are saying, but at the same time, I'm trying to see what their body language is also trying to communicate with me. Mm. So I listen with my ears and I listen with my eyes. So if you're going to be a good specialist nurse, communication skills, which ultimately also involves good listening skills, is very, very essential. Uh, right. Thanks, it appears, um, if I remember, you mentioned something about why I decided to come back into rheumatology nursing. Yeah. Right. Am I right, Ma? Yes. Yeah. So, um, when I left uh, the southeastern part of the United Kingdom to move up north, my lead nurse did not want me to leave because she saw so much potentials and she told me I would have retained you if I could. In fact, I would be speaking with the IT to see if they can get you uh, work from home all the way from the northern part wow. of England. But somehow I said, I don't think it's worth the effort. It's not just about remote nursing. It's not just about telephone nursing. So there are times when you have to uh, provide hands-on care uh, to the patient that you look after. So that didn't work. But then she said something. She, she said, walk into any trust and tell them, based on my recommendation, the you need them to employ you as a rheumatology nurse. And I was like, oh, that was so kind yeah. of her. But then there was no adverts, you know. So I just popped into the next available role and then I got in. So when I saw these adverts again around my local area, I, I applied and I was back into the role. Why did I apply? Rheumat specialty uh, areas generally, like I mentioned earlier, I fought you the independence that you require as a nurse. If you're somebody who can think, I mean, on your feet, if you're somebody who loves to make much difference, real impact in your patient's journey, then specialty areas would be most suitable for you, right? So um, mm -hmm. the advocacy part also got me into the role because got, got me interested. And then I decided I have to come back. You know, when you speak with the patients in the clinic, and you're like, something does not sit right. I need to clarify this with the consultant. Mm -hmm. And then you clarify with the consultant and the consultant says, oh, you know what? You are absolutely right. We have to make changes to their treatment or we have to request this further investigations. It gives me joy. I feel fulfilled that I've been able, you know, to do something meaningful, to make something different of that patient's encounter with me. So that in itself got me back into the role. And the other thing is because I'm a family woman, um, specialty areas, most in most parts of the United Kingdom, they work Monday to Fridays and you have your Saturdays and your Sundays free. So when my kids go to school Monday to Friday, I'm also at work. And then weekends, we have our time to ourselves. In fact, in the evening, I have time to gel and bond with them, tuck them into bed, tell them bedtime stories. And then everybody goes to sleep. In the morning, the following day, everybody goes to school or goes to work as we apply to me and my husband. And before you know it, the family work-life balance was just absolutely wow. perfect for yeah. me. Yeah. I've been so, wondering, how can someone have such a queenly look all through as if the NHS oh, strength yeah. had never touched their joints yeah. and muscles yeah. and skin? Yeah, you and, and, <laughs> yeah, you go so again. So people are really balling. Yeah, thank you so much. You <laughs> have absolutely touched so many great places out of this. And I had you and I respect you optimally. And uh, I would just like to ask you, what does a typical day at work look like? First thing, which other pathways are there uh, to make progress in this profession? How financially brilliant is this role? Is it just about the regular NHS thing, go on agency, go come back home and all that? So if you can give us insights into all those things, then we can make better informed decisions too. All right. So 
Um, my typical week, um, I will say very. Um, and then it is trust dependent. In my trust, we I am a band six specialist nurse, but we mm -hmm. have band five nurses who work with us. So in mm -hmm. my previous trust, we do not have band fives. Okay. So it is specialist nurses, band six specialist nurses who do most, in fact, practically all of the um, um, job roles that we have there. So um, in my current trust, my typical day starts with my clinic. What so time? I run, so lovely. So I resume eight, I work eight to four. But, my, but we do have uh, fellow specialist nurses who does nine to five. So it's typical, if you're a full time, you do 37.5 hours a yeah. week. Now, how you spread it out, my manager will not will not bother as long as um you are doing what you're supposed to do. So if you want to resume nine to five or do eight to four or do half eight to half four, the call is yours. Okay. Right. So my claim starts nine. So I would love to be in to do all the paperwork to get everything sorted sorted before the day starts. So I would rather, I rather opted for eight to four. So my clinic starts at nine and uh Usually, the max I see, the maximum number of patients I see per clinic is nine patients. Okay. And I have 20 minutes slots for each patient. Okay. So all things being equal, by 12 midday, my clinic is done. Okay, so right. in that unit, you guys are the typical example of you want to bamba, you want to chill with the big guys. <laughs> and some of us are running kitty kitty everywhere. But the best are shuffling bumps. Okay, there is God. Go on ahead. <laughs> right. So um what do I do in the clinic? Like I said, it's 20 minutes. So in that clinic, um all the patients that I see would have been previously assessed by their consultants mm. and most times they have been commenced on treatments now what i do is to assess the effectiveness of treatment okay to see how they are getting on right. what is their response to treatment is there any other are they getting better or is it the same or is it getting worse are there side effects to their treatment are there some other investigations I need to call for to ensure that the their their health status is at the best as could be? So basically, what I do is to do an assessment of the treatments they've been offered, and then get to know what their issues are. Yeah, most of them they've been commenced on treatment, but more often than not, we see some of them also coming in who has not been started on treatment at all especially if uh, based on the clinical findings, we do not have a leg to stand on for them to start treatment. If you cannot evidence the reason why we are commencing them on treatment, then the consultants will be wary of sending them back to their GPs or sending them back. Most of the, most of the time they are referred to us from their GPs or from within the hospital. So the consultants are usually wary of, you know, first point of contact, seeing them, nothing to evidence the need to start treatment and then sending them back straight on no so the consultant will rather have them in a specialist nurse clinic to see what has changed so that we will be in liaison with the consultants and then we move uh, the plans forward so within that 20 minutes um i do the assessment if there is any blood work i need to arrange or to evaluate um whatever blood monitoring they've had before i will do that and within that 20 minutes slot even though you think it's um easy peasy, within that 20 minute slot, I have to do down. exactly. I have to do um a, my letter to the GP for them to know where we are. In the United Kingdom, uh the GP is like the central coordinator for all um health different specialties where the patient might get sent to. They are like the rallying points. So whatever we do in various specialty areas return to, to the GP for them to know where we are, what we are doing, and what we plan to do. So, like I said, a typical uh, a typical day, um, I resume eight. My clinic runs from nine to twelve, 
and then I have my break. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have my 30 minutes break. And then uh, after my break, I finish up with my I, admin work. I mean, the administrative aspect of my job. If there are any letters I haven't done whilst I was in clinic, because there are times when patients have so much to tell that um, they practically use up the 20 minutes uh, slot talking. So because I don't want uh, other patient slots to be impinged on, I'll rather delay those things that I can do later in the day and then have all my patients sorted so that I will not unnecessarily delay them or prolong their waiting times. So mm -hmm. at such clinics, when I'm not able to finish up my letters, the later part of the day is for my admin work. And it doesn't yeah. just stop there. I also support my band five nurses in whatever queries they may have. Uh, they do the blood monitoring for those who are not coming into the clinic, but we have already started them on treatment. If they have any gray areas about some blood values, they come to me and I tell them what to do. Uh, we also run what we call the nurse advice line. So every rheumatology department, as far as I'm aware, has that line. So it's like a telephone, a call-in service where our patients who are already on treatment ring us, tell us what is bothering them, what side effects they are having, what issues that are pressing that they don't want to necessarily leave till their next clinic appointment. So it's our band five nurses who handle the advice lines and then they when they are kind of uh, in undecided as to what to do, as to what advice to offer the patients, they revert to me. They revert to me as a specialist nurse, and I clarify those mm -hmm. areas. The admin part also involves me liaising with the consultants and other specialty areas like radiology, chasing um, blood results, chasing X-ray, chasing what we call DEXA scan. That is the bone densitometry yes, okay. scan for our patients who are being managed along that line. So by four all things being equal, I shut down my computer and I go home in peace. Thank you. <laughs> That's really, really interesting. And uh, a whole lot occupied your time at work. And I really know that I wanted to say, let the poor breathe, but I can now see you guys are not the ones they are asking for to be left. <laughs> <laughs> to be allowed breathing spaces because you guys have so your let everyone breathe. Out for you. <laughs> yeah, very interesting area. So what are the advancements we talked about and how financially lucrative is this aspect of nothing? I will start with the last question, Ma. So how financially lucrative? It depends on what you're looking for. So uh, if you work with the NHS, it's it's standard banding for everyone. Yeah. Everyone knows what a band six um, nurse ends in the NHS. Yeah. But if you're somebody who uh, you want more, there are agency shifts that you can pick up. Unfortunately, you can only do weekends, but not all trust does weekend shifts. Uh, like I said, I work Monday to Friday. So um, if you want to do agency shifts, it has to be either Sunday, or, I mean, either Saturday or, or Sunday. But in all fairness, I am not bothered, you know, because like I said, it all depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. So if you if you are looking for extra, there is, there is always that privilege to do extra. Now, in my trust, we also do what they call the overtime. So there are times when if you run behind schedule, I mean, if you are supposed to finish four and for certain reasons you you finish late, probably your admin work dragged till around five, you get paid time and a half for every hour that you use extra in the place of work on your job. So for some people, they are more than happy to do overtime to cover up with outstanding letters and what have you. But the career, the, the, uh, the how financially buoyant is um I think it's the same thing for all specialist nurses. Oh, right. If you are a band seven, you get paid at a band seven level. If you're mm -hmm. a band six, it's band six. Mm -hmm. There are no enhancements. Okay. There are no enhancements when you do special specialist 
uh, nurses' jobs Monday to Friday, eight to four. So it's uh, I understand there are some specialist areas where you work overnight, but that does not apply to rheumatology. Again, it doesn't appear like you can have everything in this world. No. So you either have your life. <laughs> or you just have the money with no life so it all depends <laughs> on what you what you're looking for just but look for, for me, a way of striking the balance exactly exactly so if you are after the money by all means you have the opportunity to work over the weekend mm -hmm. uh talking about the career pathway it depends on what you want like i mentioned in my trust we have about five nurses now with as as they gain experience, clinical experience, as they improve on their skills, as they broaden their scope, they can move up to become special band six specialist nurses. Now, there are some who would rather not to the path of advancement in terms of clinical practice, who want to go into management roles. Okay. So there is an opportunity to become the manager of the department and okay. for hospital trust where they have rheumatology in the ward setting. They can also become ward managers. Now, um, that is a career pathway. For those who want to remain in the um, clini in clinical practice, they have the opportunity of growing to become uh, independent nurse prescribers. Okay. You can also advance to become the um, to become ANPs, advanced nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. And either way, depending on the trust, as an independent nurse prescriber, you become a band seven. Okay. Now, as an advanced nurse practitioner, you can grow to become a band eight. Okay. And then if you are keen and if you are passionate, we have those that we call nurse consultants. Mm -hmm. So the, the opportunity to flex, you know, is there. It all depends on what you want and how hard you are willing to work to achieve your means. Uh, suffice to say that rheumatology, like I said earlier, it's not, um, it's, it's multifaceted. We have what we call the DMAD part. DMAD is uh, acronym D-M-A-R-D, which stands for disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. So because rheumatology is so vast, some trust has kind of split all of this, uh, the department into like three different segments. Mm -hmm. So there are nurses who handle the DMAD aspect of rheumatology. And then apart from the DMAD, we have what we call the biologic team. So biologic team looks after our patients who are on biologic treatments, different from the um, usual tablets, methotrexate, leflunomide. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but just for, for clarification, if you, you you can either find yourself in the DMAT team, in the biologic team, or as a you can also work as a bone specialist nurse. Those are those are um, nurses who look after patients who are on treatment for osteoporosis. Yes. Yeah. So I mentioned saying something earlier about bone scan, DEXA scan. So if you work as a, as an osteoporosis nurse, you'll be looking after those uh, patients, and then you'll be able to request those investigations. But where I work at the moment, it's everything combined into one. And I enjoy every bit of it because it has kind of broadened my scope. I can respond to patients I, who are on biology I, I, I'm not doubting the enjoyment. I can, oh, I can <laughs> see it written all over you, to be fair, to be very candid. So, so and the way I, you I are told actually... me the technique to be like the polyvalent nurse, if yeah. you would call it that. Yeah, yeah. so... It's been very lovely. That's all very evidential in the way you handle the talks, the way you you make it so impressive that I want to sort of drop my role now and just <laughs> dash into it if there is opportunity. And that is actually mm -hmm. the beauty of having, of enjoying what one is doing. And permit me to say that um, you have performed so impressively, and I believe you continue to mount up with wings as eagles. Ma. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. Um, let me Thank not just wrap it up because we might still have one of two things to say. What would you tell the people at home, uh, those who are keen on 
doing this. And before you do that, please, do you think this role is maybe um, available in other, all other countries? Have you searched out to see whether it's only prominent in the United Kingdom or whether we can find it in places like USA? You know, some of our nurses are moving. We are going everywhere. We are going everywhere. USA, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Ireland, um, just name it, what have you. And is this role to, are, are, are people able to go into this role or is it like? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So it is not a, a UK limited role. I've done a bit of research and I can tell you that in fact, if there is any time to get on board into rheumatology, the time is now. Like I said earlier on, it's an evolving specialty and it is multifaceted. And we have just started. In, and we are always, even in England, there is always that, that shortage of rheumatology consultants, of rheumatology nurse specialists that any time you, you hardly would find the vacancy outside you know, you know, being, you, you hardly find it being advertised. But the times that you see the advert, you see so many people who want to come into the role. Now, uh, going back to your question, yes, it is not just limited to the United Kingdom. I've done a bit my, of my research and I can tell you with all confidence that it applies to almost all the Western countries where the health of their citizens is paramount. That's my one. It is a specialty area and it has come to stay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So a word for those who are watching me, um, I would say, understand yourself before you pop into any role. You need to sit down and know what you have and what are your circumstances before you make a decision as to what you want to do. Because not every role will fit you. Not every job role, not every um, not specialty role will apply to you. So you have to understand your circumstances, your family situation, your personality. You, when you have that at the back of your mind, it will help you to make an informed choice. It won't be as if, oh, because I heard Esther speak about rheumatology, I think that's the way to go. She works at clinic runs between 9 to 12, and she's done in terms of face-to-face -face clinical practice. It doesn't just end there. So understand what you stand for, and it will help you to make an informed choice. That is number one. Number two, everything in life requires your input. Even they say even helps those who help themselves. themselves yeah. you, you've got so, you've got to do something. Something has to give. It doesn't just happen. And knowing what you want helps you to know how to get there. So, which is why I mentioned earlier on, understand yourself. And then by the time you know what you stand for, it helps you to be able to navigate um, whatever career uh, that you eventually find yourself. Don't stop trying. In fact, one of the heels, the greatest evil that you can do to yourself is relenting. Don't be assuming. Don't fold your hands and expect that things will just happen. Because some people say, what's going to be is going to be. Not all the time. There are times, sometimes when you have to make things happen yourself. Yeah. So do not relent. Keep praying, keep trying, keep focused, and you will definitely get there one day. Thank you, so much. Amen. Thank you so much for ending it with the apostolic rendition. We appreciate you so much, very much. Thank you so Thank much. You Everyone so much. at home, if you could just drop some words of appreciation for uh, Sister Esther. She's done so much justice to that, but I'm very sure if you have questions, just drop into the comments here. She will be very much available to give us responses. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know the time is really, really like you should be able to expand 24 hours to like 72 hours in a day. And so I will allow you to go. But I need you, you to like sort of promise that if we need your help, you'll be very happy to turn right back and hold our hands. <laughs> I'm all yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And have a very beautiful time. We so Thank much you. appreciate you. You're most welcome anytime, sister. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye.